within the Christian conversation on abuse in the church, there's a lot of discussion about the concept of spiritual abuse. The critics are not sure the concept is necessary or useful. We know what bullying, sexual harassment, and abuse of power are, but what additional insight is provided by adding that the abuse in nature may also be spiritual? And think about it like this. If we're going to label abuse in a spiritual context as spiritual abuse, why not refer to abuse that occurs in a sports context as sports abuse? By that measure, you could have endless subsets of abuse, all depending on the context in which the abuse occurred. So why have the concept of spiritual abuse at all? Why not just talk about abuse? Well, think about it like this. You see a man shouting at a woman in a threatening manner. You conclude, well, that is bullying. But now add on an additional overlay of context. The man and woman are married. It isn't just some stranger or acquaintance who is shouting at that woman. It's the husband shouting at his wife. Is that a relevant factor to consider? Absolutely it is. This is not just bullying anymore. It's now intimate heart violence. And if we are to appreciate the depth of the abuse, the impact upon the one who experiences it, and how best to address it, we must do so from within the nuances of that familial context. Now let's add another context of a man shouting at a woman. In this case, the man is a priest and the woman is his parishioner. He considers him to be a spiritual guide, an advocate, a spiritual authority in her life, one who exerts tremendous power and authority over her. Now as he shouts, he is threatening her with excommunication, with turning her out of the church and withholding life-giving sacraments if she does not bend to his will. Again, this is bullying, but now it's very relevant to consider that it is occurring within a spiritual context. Just as the proper treatment and prevention of abuse within a household requires that we recognize the context of intimate partner violence and the impact that it can have on those who experience it, so the proper treatment and a prevention of abuse that occurs within a spiritual context likewise requires us to recognize it as spiritual abuse and again to appreciate the depth of the impact that it can have upon those who experience it. 